Yeah, the fact is that we're not safe. Life is very unsafe. Uh, and, and we didn't come here to be safe. So there's, there's another level of safety. Like the, the, the yearning for safety actually is, is striving for um, there's, a, there's, there's a truth to it kind of at a higher octave, which is the feeling of being okay with being unsafe. Because safety can be an addiction, <clears throat> that and and that addiction really has kind of taken over our society, where where I, some of you probably read the essay I wrote called "Safety Third." You, you know, like yeah, safety is important, but it's, but you know you're going to die, um, and everything changes, and there's there's there is no fundamentally there is no such thing as safety. And if you live in service of safety and minimize every risk and just try to prolong your life and preserve the status quo, like that is a recipe for stagnation and, and ossification and actually a recipe for death because life is movement, life is change. And when we try to arrest the change, and stifle the movement, then we start to die. I mean, this is true on a very basic body level. Use it or lose it. When, when, when you stop trying new things, you start getting old. And when you keep trying new things, learn new languages, gain new skills, try things that you're not good at, that you don't already know how to do, then you stay young. Your, 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 your brain, your body, knows that what is required of it. Um, so, but yeah, so to return to safety, yeah, we're not safe. And the things really worth doing in life usually involve some kind of risk because again, life is movement. So you're going outside the comfort zone, outside the familiar and, and risking, I mean, most of the things actually that take courage today do not involve physical danger, but they involve social danger. They may involve financial danger, which ultimately could end up as physical danger, but, but really the um, risk is usually not physical. And that's not to minimize it. Uh, the, the, to be rejected by the group is a profound trauma for the human being. And I know um, I'm not alone in having experienced that rejection in the last few years. The obsession with safety, and, and even if we're not obsessed with it, like the, the discomfort with being unsafe comes in part from the story, again, of what a human being is. If you're just a separate self, a flesh robot, as the story of separation calls you, then death is the ultimate catastrophe. But if you understand yourself as more than that, then death is a transition, not really so different from the transitions that we've been sharing stories about. The person who you were may no longer even exist. You maybe share some memories with that person who you were. You maybe look like that person who you were. You have some of the same friendships that that person had, but you are really no longer that person in some way. You've already died. And maybe the transition that we call death is also of that nature. Just maybe with fewer memories shared. I mean, imagine what it would be like to go through this kind of transition 
that we've been talking about, this letting go, this stepping into the space between stories. And at the same time that that happens, you are magically transplant, trans, transported to Australia or to somewhere where, they, where you don't know the language even, uh, an alien planet. And you're transported there not only uh, as yourself right now, but you find your body's different. And in fact, you find that you can't even control your body very well. And you can't speak. And you, you barely can control your motor movements. And you're this tiny little helpless blob of flesh. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what it's like. Our being is suffused into the world. And that therefore we don't actually die in that sense. And I'm sure that, that many of you have also had this experience when a loved one passes, they're no longer that body in that location, in that place, in that moment. They're everywhere now. As, the, as those experiences land, naturally what happens as we learn death, we become less afraid of it. We become maybe, it's paradoxical, more afraid of dying and less afraid of death. <laughs>